Within an unnamed republic of the former Soviet Union, Lilia is a 16-year-old girl who, with dreams of moving to America with her mother for wider opportunities in life, is eventually left abandoned by her mother, who elopes to America with her boyfriend to avoid the responsibility of raising Lilia. Taken advantage of by her aunt Anna, who removes Lilia from her current home into a squalid apartment so that Anna herself can live within the more comfortable home, Lilia leaves the education system and has her reputation tainted by her ex-friend Natasha when she blames Lilia for undertaking sex work that Natasha herself is fulfilling. Lilia remains vulnerable with only one true friend, Volodya, a young boy who escapes his abusive family life by sleeping on Lilia's sofa. With bouts of self-medicating drug use to numb the difficulties that a lack of opportunities offers them, Lilia reluctantly resorts to freelance sex work herself, where she encounters Andre, a man who promises her the world as long as she is willing to move to Sweden. However, Andre's ulterior motives become clearer and more apparent as he grooms Lilia into a world of human trafficking and sex slavery. This is Lucas Modison's Lilia Forever, a devastating drama examining the abusive manipulation towards vulnerable people aspiring for more in their lives. Whether it is financial stability, career opportunity, or romantic connection, Modison's film demonstrates a deep source of empathy towards the victims of struggle, abuse, exploitation, and trafficking, with an unflinching detail and realism which reinforces Lilia Forever's reputation as an emotionally challenging and disturbing film to watch. Roger Ebert, in his review of Lilia Forever, summarises the narrative while also suggesting how the film is far from fiction, stating that Lilia Forever provides a human face for a story that has become familiar in the newspapers. It follows a 16-year-old girl from the former Soviet Union as she is abandoned by her mother, places her faith in the wrong stranger, and is sold into prostitution. She is naive and innocent, and what looks like danger to us looks like deliverance to her, that there are countless such stories makes this one even more heartbreaking. With an honest observation, Lilia Forever illustrates the instability that motivates victims of abuse to seek any possible opportunity they can, even if unfortunately it leads to people seeking more from their lives through means that exploit themselves, examples of which there are countless. While Lilia Forever's subject matter is undeniably intense, the film is also grounded within reality, many viewers finding the events within the film to be parallel to the real-life experiences of Danguole Rasalate, a 16-year-old Lithuanian girl abandoned by her mother leaving for America. She was promised by an older man a job as a berry picker in Sweden, in which she was locked within an apartment in Melma, forced into sex slavery. Upon escaping the apartment and becoming the victim of sex sexual assault by a group of men claiming to offer help, Danguole Rasalate jumped from a bridge, taking her own life. It's difficult not to find Danguole Rasalate's traumatising experience reflected within Lucas Modison's film, further reinforcing the brutal truth that the events depicted within Lilia Forever are based within a very unsettling reality. Human trafficking and sex slavery are very real horrors. Therefore, in depicting these real-world traumas, there is a responsibility to portray the victims with respect and understanding, an ability that Lucas Modison achieves by demonstrating a wealth of empathy towards Lilia, which extends also to her friend Volodya, a young boy who also comes from a neglectful, abusive home. Both young souls lost within a landscape that offers no opportunities for a better life. Lilia and Volodya are flawed characters. Lilia, a 16-year-old girl, can be bratty and arrogant demanding cigarettes from a convenience store cashier who, when refusing to give the cigarettes, Lilia insults her and Volodya, possibly 11 or 12 years old, reliant on sniffing glue as a form of self-medicated escapism, and he has a persistent crush on Lilia which results in questionable actions such as playing dead so he can receive mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact, resulting in offending Lilia for taking advantage of her compassion towards him. These are characters who, not within the best circumstances, may not react with the best manner, but Modison's portrayal of these characters never belittles or insults their personalities on methods of surviving. It's apparent early on that there is a depth of sympathy towards these flawed, complex characters who are simply trying to survive, desperate for any opportunity that may come their way. 
This is the most apparent when, all and any arguments between the characters aside, Lily and Volodya have an immensely strong bond, Volodya even commenting how the two of them are like a true family, offering a sense of protection and sanctuary for each other, when the rest of the world can be so cruel and unforgiving. This bond is ever present and helps in the characters overcoming their disagreements, even transcending their earthly forms after being challenged with one of their biggest conflicts. When Lilia agrees to move to Sweden under the influence of the older man Andre for work supposedly picking berries, a manipulation which Volodya sees straight through, even when Lilia's desperation for any possible opportunity clouds her judgement. However, away from the turmoil and complicated charm of Lilia's and Volodya's bond, Modison reminds us that Lilia forever is fixated on very real issues, never flinching from the most unsettling realistic details regarding its depiction of human trafficking and sex slavery. Sexual abuse is portrayed with harrowing believability, such as how Lilia dissociates from her circumstances during sex, from her reluctant freelance sex work within a nightclub paid by older men, resulting in her recoiling when the man looming over her kisses her neck, sex work not willingly performed by Lilia, but solely because she has no other means to earn financial income, to the disturbing POV shot that focuses on the string of men who contribute to the continuation of human trafficking by paying Lilia's trafficker to have sex with her, resulting in a sequence where the sexual dehumanisation is impossible to ignore. After viewing Lilia's terrible experiences with moving to Sweden, hoping for a better life, it's also difficult not to speculate whether this may be a similar fate for Lilia's mother too, escaping the destitute estate where they once lived under the promise of a brighter future, only to be met with abuse. It's tragic and yet all too believable, when manipulated to believe in the prospects of a more stable future after experiencing exploitation and abuse from family members and from the local community, we can't blame Lilia for trusting in Andre, she was within a vulnerable position and Andre recognised this, grooming her to become the next victim in his human trafficking ring. Modderson is certain not to blame Lilia, even when the audience can recognise the questionable red flags, from the name change on Lilia's passport, a passport addressed to somebody called Katya, to the taking of said passport by the trafficker who escorts Lilia to a Swedish apartment, which serves as a prison. Modderson's film is certain to not lose track of the human empathy towards a character who is struggling through a real world hell, providing glimpses of comfort in Lilia's sleep, as she is accompanied by an angelic Volodya having died outside of Lilia's apartment due to an overdose, unable to cope with her departure, who despite his own struggles, still only has compassion and friendship for Lilia. A powerful realisation is when Volodya gifts Lilia the entire world one Christmas, Lilia having forgotten it was even the festive period, as days have blurred together and her track of time is lost. Lilia acknowledges it isn't an inviting world, the landscape shrouded in mist and clearly too cold to be outside. At this stage, Lilia has suffered enough and views her only true escape, without risk of being returned to her abusers, lies within an afterlife with her only friend. It's a tragic, devastating conclusion for a film that offers little glimmer of hope, but Modderson's empathy towards Lilia understands her decision, and while Volodya's protest of Lilia's intent to take her own life serves as a stand-in for concerned viewers, it's difficult not to acknowledge that Lilia, by the end of the film, reinforcing Modderson's compassion for his subject when Lilia and Volodya are portrayed with the angel wings on the rooftop of a building back in their homeland, she is now no longer suffering. In conclusion, Lucas Modison's Lilia Forever simultaneously carries a great sense of empathy, yet is also uncompromising in its direct, confrontational portrayal of human trafficking, abuse and its impact on its victims. By delving deeply into this unsettling and cruel underbelly, Lucas Modison's film proposes important discussions regarding consent, dehumanisation and human rights violations, raising awareness of a subject matter that is still not as widely discussed as it truly should be. Lilia Forever serves as a cautionary tale of sorts, demonstrating the reality of this subject and raising awareness regarding the matter. Upon being taught this subject via the film, it is then beneficial for the audience to remain educated on the topic of human trafficking. The Human Trafficking Foundation provides additional support and even details the locations of charity support services for trafficking victims, and Amnesty International actively campaigns for the protection of trafficking 
attacking survivors and sex workers' rights. In using his film as a narrative educational tool, Modison is encouraging us to seek out ways to support the end of this human exploitation. To put it simply, if Lilia forever affects you emotionally, then what can we do as viewers to change things? A special thank you to my incredible tier Patreon supporter Gil, and to my super tier Patreon supporters Constantine Bombelli and Victoria. Yeah.